Okay, so welcome to the seminar today, all of you, and uh, good to see many people back after a long time. Actually, uh, uh, many or many people in the audience haven't seen for a long while. Welcome back, Devashish. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, especially Devashish. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, today our speaker is Onkar Parikar, who has recently uh, joined TIFR a few months back in July and uh, from Stanford. And he has been, uh, anyway, when I wrote to him, I thought that he was still at Stanford and, uh, and uh, yeah, and he has been working on this uh, topic of uh, quantum, at the interface of quantum information theory and ADS-CFT for quite a while and also on other topics. But today he's going to talk, tell us about uh, the quantum error correction and black hole interior. Okay, over to you, Ankar. Then, yeah, tell us yeah. About thank, thank you so much, uh, Ayan, for the invitation to speak at IIT Madras. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here virtually. Um, so, I wanted to tell you today about uh, some work uh, we are doing in progress with uh, Vijay Bal Subramanian, Arjun Kaur, and Kathy Lee. Um, and it's going to be based on uh, quantum error correction in the black hole interior. Um, I should say, please feel free to stop me and ask questions or uh, make remarks uh, at any point. Uh, so let me start with a brief introduction. Uh, so recent progress on evaporating black holes has shown that after the page time, uh, a portion of the black hole interior, namely the island, uh, the so-called island, uh, is encoded in the radiation. Um, now, there have been a lot of... Uh, there's been a flurry of work uh, on the subject uh, in recent months. Uh, I've just sort of uh, displayed some of the, the, the papers uh, on the subject. Um, but, uh, you know, the setup involves uh, a holographic quantum system, which uh, for, throughout the talk I'm going to call B. Um, so this B is going to be a quantum system, uh, which is holographically dual uh, to a black hole. Okay, so it's uh, the semi-classical uh, description uh, on the black on the holographic dual on the gravity dual side uh, corresponds to a black hole, um, and in fact, uh, this this quantum system B is going to be coupled to another um, quantum system which we are going to call R. Um, the 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 uh, the system R is going to basically serve as a bath, um, which you can think of as sort of uh, absorbing all the radiation uh, from the black hole. So the top picture here, uh, you see the sort of uh, UV complete uh, quantum picture of the system where you have some you know, quantum mechanical system B uh, displayed as the black dot uh, coupled to uh, a, a potentially higher dimensional system R, uh, which is displayed in blue. Uh, and the semi-classical dual uh, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, the system uh, corresponds to a black hole, uh, which is dual to the system B, uh, coupled to this radiation, this radiation bath R. Um, and as I said, uh, you can think of R as collecting the uh, uh, radiation emitted by the black hole. Now, the semi-classic in the, um, uh, so I, I discussed this uh, uh, just right now, um, but what these calculations show, these recent calculations, they show that after the page time, um, a new quantum extremal surface develops uh, in the black hole space time. Um, so in this picture, it's displayed by the sort of black dot uh, at the bifurcate horizon of the black hole. Uh, and then a portion of the black hole interior, which is here labeled by the island, uh, moves over to the entanglement wedge of the bath, which is to say that, uh, the sort of semi-classical degrees of freedom in the island region uh, get encoded um, in this, um, this path system, capital R. Now, quantum error correction provides the sort of underlying framework uh, to understand entanglement wedge reconstruction, uh, as was first explained in, in some of these papers. And you might be more familiar with the um, sort of usual entanglement wedge reconstruction picture that one uh, has in ADS-CFT, um, where you know, some sub-region, let's say capital A of the CFT, um, 
uh, has uh, has a corresponding Ryu Takainagi surface or a quantum extremal surface uh, here displayed in blue. Uh, and then the sort of semi-classical degrees of freedom in what is called the entanglement wedge of A, which is sort of the region of the bulk space-time uh, contained between A and its uh, Ryu Takainagi surface. Um, so uh, the usual story of entanglement wedge reconstruction is that the semi-classical degrees of freedom, the bulk semi-classical degrees of freedom in the entanglement wedge of A are encoded inside A uh, in such a way that any errors uh, which occur on A complement or A bar uh, do not encode this, do not affect uh, this encoding. Okay, so this is sort of roughly why uh, the usual, the entanglement wedge reconstruction paradigm is um, can be can be efficiently formulated in terms of quantum error correction, and even in the context of the island, we expect something similar to be true. Uh, we expect that the semi-classical degrees of freedom in the island should be encoded in this way, in a very similar way, uh, in the bath Hilbert space or in the radiation Hilbert space. Um, but in a recent uh, paper, may I ask yes, something here? Uh, yes, of course. In this in this context. So when you're doing this uh, picture, right, uh, for the, yeah. uh, that, that you're showing before, so yes. actually this is, uh, uh, so the system is essentially that, okay, so let me put it this way, but so it's a full system that is, the, that is supposed to be pure, right? If you take our island and this thing, whereas in the other picture that you showed, these are like two different ways to represent the same system and they're pure on their own, right? Uh, yeah, the, you mean this the, picture? In this picture, right, the the, the boundary yeah. system and the bulk system are pure states on their own, and they're yeah. just two different ways of writing the same thing. That's uh, correct. So, so yeah. So then the question there is that uh, when you uh, so so when you say that one is encoded in the other, so what what do you actually mean? Uh, yes. Can you be more uh, so? Uh, what exactly is encoded in what, and how it is different yes, yes. from this or anything else? Yes, yes, of course. So uh, what we mean when we say that, say the island region is encoded in the in the bath, what one means is that um, if you have uh, some bulk operator uh, in the island region, um, you know, for some semi-classical quantum field theory degrees of freedom in on the bulk space time, if you have some bulk operator that is contained in the island region, then you can rewrite that, uh, uh, or in in the in the sort of parlance of ADS-CFT, you can reconstruct that operator um, as an operator acting on the bath system. Okay. So in a way, uh, in the going back to the first picture that you wrote, is R and B. You said yes. there is a, in B there is a, you you are, you are there is some kind of separation in B uh, of two in some of two parts, let's say, and there, or there's a subregion in B, and you're saying that the operators that act in the subregion of B, that sort of interior, uh, right. will be encoded in R. That's, uh, yes. that's the so claim. That, that's right. Just, just to, I, you're, you're quite right, but just to sort of clarify one small thing, which is that uh, when I say B, I mean the full quantum system that is dual to the black hole originally. Um, and then you couple this B to the radiation bath, and then you know, a lot of time passes. And then, so what happens in the bulk dual picture, so, uh, on the semi-classical black hole spacetime, this is, you know, you 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 could sort of say that some of some portion of the interior spacetime goes over into the entanglement wedge of the bath, okay, um, and so then all operators inside that region are now encoded in R. Uh, so it's sort of a rearrangement of the semi-classical degrees of freedom on the gravity side uh, in terms of the entanglement wedges of B and R, which are like the Juvie UV systems, the, the quantum systems uh, uh, where, where everything is well defined. Uh, okay, thanks clear? for the clarification. Thanks for the yeah. clarification. But then there comes another stupid question, perhaps. Uh, so no, no, please go suppose ahead. You, suppose you take a region of R like this, like in these papers they are taking uh, some. Uh, so if I look in the first picture, it's like an ordinary quantum field theory without gravity, say, uh, B uh, coupled yeah. to R. Yeah. So yes. then the claim is that would be able to, uh, there is some kind of an entanglement. So there's a growth of entanglements in between R, uh, this thing, and a subregion of B, which is, uh, which is there, right? And uh, so, 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 I mean, is it consistent with the usual uh, quantum field theory uh, things? I mean, would you expect such a thing to happen that in a theory without gravity that this, 
that uh, that that such a thing would uh, or or is it somewhat special that B is holographic and it has some holographic description? Um, so for any B, when you couple couple it to some system R and then you evolve with some Hamiltonian, which sorry, so so when you evolve with some Hamiltonian which couples B and R, that's going mm -hmm. to generate entanglement between B and R. Um, that's true of any quantum system B and any quantum system yeah. R. What is special yeah. about this system is that to begin with, uh, B has, we start in a state of B, which has some holographic dual, uh, a, 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 some black hole uh, space time, which is dual to that state of B. And then when one wants to ask what happens to the dual geometry, uh, as one proceeds with time evolution and this entanglement builds between B and R. And what these calculations show is that after the page time, there is something um, interesting which happens, which is that the encoding of semi-classical bulk degrees of freedom in B, uh, which was originally entirely in B, now sort of gets distributed oh. between B and R because of this entanglement between B and R. Um, so what's yeah, yeah, but I think yeah. the point uh, point is that that you are not talking of the entire B, right? You are talking of the specialities that there is an island in B. There is something that we call an island so, in B, right? But uh, and there I is say some B, yeah. When I say B, I always mean the UV, the, the quantum system, the UV quantum system, which is dual. Uh, you know, the say say for example, an SYK model or something like that. Uh, the island. No, I understand that, but what based on island the, is a sub yeah. sub region or. The subsector of B, is it right? The island should be a subsector of B, and originally, uh, that's the originally, original way. Yeah. Originally, I mean, it's 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 okay to think of it that way. Originally, like before the coupling or before page time, it makes sense to think of the island as being encoded in B. But the point of these calculations is that after the page time, it doesn't make sense to think of the island as encoded in B anymore. In fact, it gets encoded in R. Oh, okay. Thanks, thanks for this clarification yeah. because this is where uh, this is where my confusion was about okay. this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you think that the point is that one should not take this picture that literally that uh, this uh, the island should be actually part of R in a way and not that's uh, not the B. That's so, correct. Right. Thanks. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh. That's right. Okay. Great. So um, let's see. Uh, yeah. So I, we were discussing how. Uh, Entanglement wedge reconstruction, uh, even in the context of this island, um, uh, should proceed in the usual way uh, with uh, a quantum error correction interpretation. Uh, but in a recent paper, Kim, Preskill, and Tang suggested a more robust version of quantum error correction for the black hole interior, where not only do we expect uh, this encoding to be um, protected against errors uh, on the complement of the bar, but also uh, against some class of errors acting on the bath itself. Okay, so this is uh, this is slightly novel and different, um, uh, and and uh, seemingly more robust. Um, and so uh, the 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 goal of this talk will be to explore um, this sort of novel quantum error correction that was proposed by Kim Preskill and Tang um, from a more gravity perspective. Okay, and we will we will basically be using the formalism of JT gravity. Uh, to to try and uh, understand this um, this quantum error correction. So I'll begin by uh, sort of introducing some preliminary um, some with some preliminary discussion of quantum error correction, uh, just to get us all on the same page. But before that, are, are there any questions? Okay. Um, okay. So then let me let me go ahead with a, a sort of review, a brief review of quantum error correction. Um, so let us consider um, a code subspace. Uh, a code subspace you should just think of as some sort of small Hilbert space, which corresponds to the Hilbert space of semi-classical degrees of freedom in the bulk of, uh, of ADS-CFT. Um, uh, so let's consider this code subspace, which is encoded isometrically in a bigger Hilbert space, which I'm, I'm going to denote H physical. So uh, the code subspace is going to be denoted by H code. Um, the physical subspace, physical Hilbert space is a sort of bigger Hilbert space. You can think of this as the Hilbert space of the dual CFT. Um, and there's an encoding map, which I'll call V, 
uh, which uh, embeds this code subspace inside the bigger uh, physical Hilbert space uh, in such a way that it preserves uh, inner products. Now, the general theory of quantum error correction deals with recovering the encoded state uh, from the physical system after the action of potential errors on the physical system. Okay, so you could imagine that once you encode this code subspace inside the physical Hilbert space, there could be some error operations acting happening on the physical systems, physical system, given that it's very large. Uh, and then the question is, um, when can we uh, recover or decode uh, this encoded uh, subspace? Um, now, in this in this business, uh, an error operation is modeled by the action of a quantum channel. Uh, which I'm going to denote by E. Uh, a quantum channel, you should just think of as a sort of generalized quantum operation um, where you could, in, for, for, for example, couple your system um, to, some, to some environment and then do a joint unitary transformation and then trace out the environment, okay? Uh, it's, so it's a slight generalization of unitary time evolution where you're also allowed to, to couple some some ancillary uh, environment degrees of freedom uh, to your system. So that's what a quantum channel is. Um, now, the action of a general quantum channel can always be expressed in terms of what are called its Krauss operators, uh, which uh, are usually denoted by E sub M. Uh, so for example, in this equation, you see uh, how a general quantum channel E will act on a density matrix rho. Uh, it, uh, if it were a unitary, there would, there would only be one term in the sum. Um, but for a, for a general quantum channel, you can have a sum or uh, different m's uh, with these Krauss operators E sub m. Okay, and they satisfy the condition that sum or m, E m dagger E m equals one. Now, as I was just saying, another useful fact about quantum channels is that a, a general quantum channel, you can always think of in terms of some ancillary environment degrees of freedom, uh, which are labeled by H sub environment. Um, and you could, let's say, let's say that these environment, this environment Hilbert space is spanned um, by a basis of states, which are uh, labeled by E sub N. So you can think of this quantum channel capital E as acting in the following way. You take your input density matrix rho, you couple it to some fiducial state E naught on the environment, then you do a joint unitary transformation U. Uh, note that U is a joint unitary, which acts both on the physical system and on the environment. So this, this joint unitary U will somehow couple your system rho uh, with this ancillary environment degrees of freedom, and then you trace out the environment. Okay, you can, so you can always think of uh, the action of any quantum channel in this way. Uh, and for our purposes, it's going to be useful to, to, to have this, this picture in mind or this description of the quantum channel. Um, so so that's, that's, what, that's how we are going to model our errors um, on the physical system. Um, and then we say that an error is correctable um, if there exists a recovery channel R such that um, for any density matrix rho supported on the code subspace, uh, we have, the, we have that the composition of R with E gives back the original density matrix, okay? So, so we say that, again, uh, we say that the channel E is recoverable or correctable uh, if you can find a recovery channel R such that R acting on E acting on rho gives back rho. But importantly, this condition is only to be uh, imposed on density matrices rho, which are supported on the code subspace because it would be too much to ask for this uh, more general. Now, one of, so this condition is more or less, a de this is more or less a definition of what one means when we say that a particular error can be corrected. Um, but one of the key results of quantum error, correct, the theory of quantum error correction is that um, there are somehow more accessible conditions that you can, uh, you can derive which tell you when a particular error operation can be corrected, okay? So for example, I'm going to tell you one such condition which is particularly useful for us. Um, in order to uh, tell you about this condition, I have to introduce some notation 
so so bear with me for a little while. Um, so what we are going to do is we are going to introduce another reference system, which I'm going to call eight sub ref. Now uh, this eight sub ref is isomorphic uh, to the code subspace. So so we, by definition, we take this reference system to have the same number of uh, states or a same an isomorphic basis of states uh, as as the code subspace, and then we construct uh, this particular state psi, where you can see that roughly speaking, this reference system that we constructed is maximally entangled uh, with the physical system. Uh, so I suppose I should introduce some notation. So this on the physical factor, uh, let me see if I can just annotate here. Yeah. Okay, so on this physical factor, you can see what I'm writing. Can you? Can you not? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, great, great. Uh, so on this physical factor, um, the the physical state psi sub i is defined like this. Uh, it's basically the image of the code subspace state i uh, inside uh, the physical system. So this v recall is the encoding map. Um, so capital psi psi sub i um, is um, basically the image of these code subspace vectors inside the big the bigger physical Hilbert space. Um, now what this what we are doing here is that we are taking this reference system capital uh, reference system which is also labeled by the same basis vectors and we are sort of maximally entangling that um, with the physical system by sort of you know, summing over i and writing this particular superposition with the physical system. Um, but in addition to this, there is also the action of the channel, which is going on, the error channel, which is going on here, because note that this um, E naught is the uh, sort of fiducial state uh, on which you, you take these an ancillary degrees of freedom in the environment, uh, and then you act with this joint unitary U, um, um, on 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 this uh, on the system, uh, which corresponds to the action of the of the quantum channel, basically. Okay, so um, you uh, so basically we construct uh, this particular state psi, uh, which knows about um, the 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 particular quantum channel uh, or the error channel that one is uh, interested in, and now the claim is that the channel E is correctable if and only if uh, in, in this particular state psi, um, the reference and the environment degrees of freedom are completely uncorrelated, uh, which is to say that the reduced density matrix on the reference and environment factors is completely factorized, or you can equivalently, uh, you, you can equivalently state that uh, as a condition uh, in terms of mutual information. So the mutual information uh, between this, this, reference, this reference factor um, and this environment factor uh, must be zero, okay? Uh, so sorry if that is a lot of notation, but my, the point I wanted to convey here is that um, th this, this is a certain criterion which helps, which, which allows us to translate uh, the, uh, the, the criterion for quantum error correction in the language of some more familiar things like uh, mutual information, uh, which we can then hope to compute. Um, in a system with, let's say, a gravity dual uh, or, or something like that. Okay. Now, we, before we proceed to uh, black holes, we will also need a slight generalization of this formalism, um, where uh, the code subspace we, we, we will require to have a natural tensor factorization like this. Okay. Uh, so, up till now, I, we didn't assume anything about uh, the specific nature of the code subspace, but here from, in, in, from now on, we'll assume that the code subspace has a particular tensor factorization in terms of eight sub A and eight sub A prime. And roughly you can think of this as, uh, you know, as corresponding to the interior of the black hole and the exterior of the black hole. Remember that the code subspace is sort of the Hilbert space of semi-classical uh, degrees of freedom in the bulk. Um, and uh, and we're by by imposing this tensor factorization, we're just sort of um, 
building in the structure of the interior uh, degrees of freedom and the exterior degrees of freedom. Sorry, again, I'm yeah. a bit confused. Again, the definition yeah, yeah, of the core subspace. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, so I thought the core subspace. Uh, okay. So here you mean the, uh, the you want to only represent operators that act only on the island, right? On uh, uh, right. So in that case, shouldn't the core subspace be smaller? That's right. So you can do that if you want. You could only worry about operators which act on the island, and then this. Let's say one of these factors will be trivial. Let's say this one. But uh, mm -hmm. in general, the code subspace doesn't have to, um, the, the code subspace can be whatever you want. So in, 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 in principle, it is this, it's the Hilbert space of all sort of semi-classical uh, excitations in the bulk, or sort of quantum field theory excitations in the bulk. Uh, so mm -hmm. there will be some bulk excitations in the, the island region, uh, let's say, which is this part. And then there will be some excitations out in the exterior of the black hole, which is this part. Um, and, 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 and so that's the full code subspace. And you're, you're right in that uh, you're going to eventually find that this, this factor gets encoded in, in the bath and that factor gets encoded in the, in the, in the original quantum system B. B um, yeah. yeah, but, but at this stage, we don't have to, we don't, we don't have to say any, anything more about this. Uh, all I see. Saying, I, yeah, I understand. All you're saying uh, but, is that the sports subspace yeah. has this structure. Yeah. Yeah, but but then I have a second question. The, uh, yeah. the, the island is shrinking as a function of time, right? So this factorization is uh, kind of not a usual kind of factorization, right? It, it depends what time slice you're choosing or what cost slice you choose. That's correct. Yes, that's correct. Uh, you'll see that. In, yes, you're right. Uh, you'll see that in so in the model that I'm going to work with a little bit later. This problem doesn't really arise um, in that, uh, in at least in this model, the, the model I'm referring to is the PSSY model, the West Coast model, if you like. Uh, in that model, it, 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 this doesn't happen. Your island is sort of a, a fixed, fixed portion of the interior of the black hole. Um, but in general, you're right. It, it will depend on uh, what at what time you're looking on the on the dot. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, let me proceed then. Um, so the, as I was saying, the additional structure that we demand of our code subspace is this, this particular tensor factorization between A and A prime. And with this additional structure, uh, we can define a more general um, error correction scheme, which is often referred to as subsystem error correction. Um, and in subsystem error correction, we only require the state on H sub A, or one of the factors, uh, to be recoverable. So in other words, we say that uh, the, the, sy the system is correctable on, the, on, on, let's say, the factor A sub A if for the given, this, uh, the given error channel E, there exists a recovery channel R such that R acting on E, um, acting on some arbitrary density matrix on this code subspace, uh, gives back at least the, the same density matrix on the A factor and it can do something, it can do whatever it wants with the A prime factor. And once again, we only demand this condition uh, for density matrices, uh, which are supported on the code subspace. Okay. Um, okay, great. So that's, uh, that's a slight generalization of the original error correction story I was mentioning before. Um, and once again, we can reformulate, again, you can think of this as a definition, but we can, just as before, we can reformulate this definition in terms of more useful criteria, criteria uh, for, uh, for error correction, which uh, can hopefully, um, you know, which are somewhat more accessible in terms of computation. Um, and in order to do this, uh, just like before, we introduce a, a reference system uh, now, before we had just one reference system, which was isomorphic to the code subspace, but now our code subspace has two factors, A and A prime. So correspondingly, we, we must introduce two reference systems, one isomorphic to A sub A, the other isomorphic to A sub A prime. Uh, and then uh, just as before, we construct this uh, roughly maximally entangled state uh, between the reference uh, and the physical system and then there's also this environment which corresponds to the quantum channel E, 
which is in some fiducial state E naught. And then we act with the uh, with this joint unitary U corresponding to the quantum channel uh, <clears throat> on the physical system and the environment factor. Um, and uh, just as before, uh, the psi sub i comma i prime was the image uh, of the code subspace states uh, inside the physical uh, Hilbert space. Okay, and once you define the state psi, uh, you go ahead and you compute uh, the mutual information. Uh, this time between uh, the reference system uh, and uh, the other reference system and the environment. Uh, and the claim in this case is that if this mutual information is zero, uh, then the, the error can be correct. Or you can equivalently state that in terms of density matrix, de density matrices uh, as uh, I have done over here. Okay. Uh, if this was too much notation, the upshot again is that uh, you can reformulate the quantum error correction conditions in terms of uh, mutual information between some subsystems uh, in a particular state. Um, and this is useful, this is going to be useful from our point of view uh, because this will allow us to compute uh, these mutual informations in some system, in certain systems with gravity duals, uh, which we will be interested in. Okay, so that that is all. Uh, that is all for my uh, brief review of quantum error correction. Uh, are there any questions at this stage? Because uh, now I'm going to go on to the model for a black hole. Okay, if not, let me proceed. Um, so now we are going to try and um, use this uh, framework uh, to study a particular toy model uh, for black hole evaporation which was constructed recently by um, Pennington, Schenker, Stanford, and Yang in the so-called West Coast model. Um, and so the, the model is as follows. Um, one imagines, uh, once again, we have these two systems B and R, which were introduced in the first slide. Um, the, the, system, the quantum system B is entangled um, uh, with, uh, with, with the, the Bath system R, uh, so these alpha states, these alphas are some states um, which form an orthogonal or, or an orthonormal basis uh, for the Bath system R. Um, and we imagine that they're sort of entangled in this way uh, with some states uh, of this quantum system B, uh, which have uh, black hole duals, okay? So I'm going to describe uh, these states in more detail now. Um, so the state psi alpha of this quantum system B, uh, you should think of as being dual to black holes in JT gravity uh, with an end of the world brain somewhere deep in the interior. And from this perspective, this alpha uh, is sort of a label uh, for the state uh, of an intrinsic degree of freedom uh, on this end of the world brain. Okay, so, so, so in this picture, uh, you, you, the, the state psi alpha corresponds to this, um, this black hole uh, that I've drawn here. Uh, and here, this red line is the end of the world brain with some degree of freedom alpha uh, living on it. Okay, so one way you can think of this uh, or, or think of preparing these states psi alpha is that you think of them in the, do, in the quantum system B um, as being prepared by, uh, by a Euclidean path integral. Uh, like so, um, and the so this Euclidean path integral uh, prepares some state uh, at let's say t equals zero, um, which uh, which we want to describe, uh, and the Euclidean path integral happens over some some length uh, beta over two, um, and at the other end of this interval, uh, you have to specify some boundary conditions. And you can think of this alpha as labeling those boundary conditions. Okay. On the on the bulk side, uh, on the JT, yes, please. Yeah, I have a question here. So uh, here you are only preparing the black hole state, right? But in yes. the earlier thing that you were talking about, actually you are supposed to prepare not only the black hole state, but also the R state together. Uh, yes. Like you should prepare all of this by some Euclidean path integral, including the R, but here, uh, Yes. I so mean, I'm right now. Yeah. I, right now, I'm just telling you what this state is. Mm. 
Okay. I see. Uh, I, I'm I'm telling you how to prepare this state, and then the the full state. You're completely right. Uh, is defined as this sort of uh, you know superposition of like direct products of these states or this kind of entangles. Yeah, but this is just a postulate, right? I mean, this is simply yes, a yes. postulate for the state. Whereas in That's the I mean, what you would like to write in a dynamical model, you should be able yes. to prepare the whole thing together, right? I, I completely agree. That's absolutely right. But uh, but this is sort of a toy model for what you expect. You I expect see. that as time evolves, you generate more and more entanglement between, uh, you, you know, between, uh, oh, uh, you, you expect more and more entanglement between B and R. Um, and so uh, this sort of toy model uh, is 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 trying to capture that fact. It's it's trying to give you sort of an, an you know write down an entangled state between B and R, um, and it's not going to be exactly the dynamical model that one has in mind. It's a toy model for that, but you'll see that it has many of the features. In okay. particular, it has an island and so on. Ooh. Okay, is that is that clear? Okay, great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, right, so uh, I, I was saying that these states, uh, these states psi alpha uh, are defined uh, by, or are prepared uh, by a Euclidean path integral uh, on some interval. Uh, and you can think of the label alpha as the boundary condition at the other end of the interval. And on the dual gravity side, uh, these, these Euclidean path integrals correspond to uh, having some bulk JT gravity um, ending on an end of the world brain. And you can think of this label alpha as some intrinsic degree of freedom on this end of the world brain, okay? It's just some freely propagating degree of freedom on this brain. And so whenever you have a contraction between, between brains, uh, the, the propagator for alpha will just be an identity matrix. So delta alpha beta, okay? Um, so that's that's what these states psi alpha correspond to, uh, and then we model this uh, evaporating black hole as um, as roughly speaking this entangled state um, between uh, the black hole and the radi and, and the bar. Now this parameter, so there's a parameter k here. Uh, uh, k basically labels uh, the number of states in this superposition. Um, and you can think of this K as playing the role of time in a more realistic uh, dynamical uh, black hole evaporation process, because uh, as Pennington, Schenker, uh, Stanford, and Yang showed, um, when K is much less than uh, E to the S, E to the, so uh, E to the S not here is the extremal entropy uh, of the black hole. Um, when K is much, much less than E to the S not, uh, then the quantum, what happens is that if you if you ask for the entropy of the bath system, capital R, then it turns out that in this regime, the quantum extremal surface for the entropy of the bath turns out to be an empty surface. And you find that correspondingly, the entropy of the bath system R just sort of grows, uh, grows logarithmically uh, with K. Okay, it grows with K. But on the other hand, when K is much, much greater than E to the S naught, then what happens is that there is a new quantum extremal surface. Uh, in particular, the bifurcate horizon of the black hole right here uh, ends up becoming the new quantum extremal surface, which has uh, a, a smaller quantum extremal um, area. And um, the, so, so for that reason, um, the, there's an island in the, in the geometry, which now gets encoded um, by the standard entanglement regions reconstruction paradigm in the bar. Okay, so, so this, this model ha has precisely the same island transition uh, as, um, as the, the more dynamical models um, have. Uh, but it's just a sort of simple, sim much simpler time model, which we can analyze uh, with, uh, with uh, relative ease. Now, uh, um, sorry, yes. in, this, in this sort of island transition, 
is this yes. assumption of uh, maximal entanglement important? Uh, uh, it's not. It's not. So you can you can have right. some right. You can have some coefficients if you want. You can call this alpha prime, and you can have some coefficients here, oh. uh, something like that. And you if so, what what is important is the rank of m in this case, and you'll find that as as you increase the rank of m at some point you'll find a transition but so here in this discussion i'm just sort of ignoring this for simplicity uh, but you can yeah as i said you can do a more gentle analysis okay uh, any other questions so this this actually comes out from the kind of this uh, replica one hole uh, that's like exactly right. pictures, uh, that, that's uh, exactly right yeah exactly so i'm not going to review that calculation for you mm. because that okay. was done yeah, sure. in the, in this paper uh, but mm -hmm. you're exactly right that you this the way you find these quantum extremal surfaces these two statements that i was making here is that you compute the Rennie entropy in uh, in this particular state uh, in this particular state uh, and then you use the bulk gravity uh, for that computation and then you'll find you discover that um, um you you discover these this new quantum extremal surface after the after when after k is when k exceeds e to the s okay. okay thanks yeah sure uh so our goal now is going to be study uh the the, the quantum error correction properties uh that i had described uh previously in this particular model and just to sort of make connection with our um, with the framework that we developed in the first part of the talk, um, you know, our, the in this in this model, the physical what we call the physical Hilbert space before, uh, which is the big Hilbert space, is going to be uh, the tensor product of B and R. Okay, um, and the code subspace, as I was describing earlier, will be the Hilbert space of sort of bulk excitations or bulk quantum field theory excitations on the black hole background. And you can think of them uh, in terms as being factorized in terms of the interior degrees of freedom and the exterior degrees of freedom. And then this, this we think of this code subspace of bulk excitations as being uh, encoded or embedded inside the bigger uh, physical Hilbert space, which is the Hilbert space of this quantum system B um, and the the bar R. Now, sorry, uh, maybe you already yeah. clarified this. What is interior and exterior in this uh, toy model? Uh, yes. So in the in the toy model, the interior will be this part, and the exterior will be that part. Because you see, after so after the page time, the the new quantum extremal surface is this one. Uh, is this one the bi mm. bifurcated horizon of the black hole? Mm. So it sort of makes sense to think about one side of that um, as being encoded in in B, and the other side of it as as being encoded in R. And in fact, that's precisely what happens. So one, so we can think of this as uh, uh, or as sort of the interior, uh, and that is the exterior. And what you find is that the interior is encoded inside the, the bath and the exterior is encoded inside this B. Yeah, but that is sort of you're putting it by hand by the answer for the state, right, in a way. This answers that you wrote down in sub psi, so that is sort yes. of put in already by hand, right, this encoder. No, no, so that's not putting it in by hand. Um, so this, you, com you discover sort of by doing a computation of uh, the Rennie entropies, right? So you take the state and you compute, let's say the Rennie entropy of R, and you discover that when K is greater than E to the S naught, there is a new quantum extremal surface which develops at this point. And so that- Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but what I'm asking basically is that yes. the, the fact that you have said that there is this uh, product structure, which is maximal entanglement with alpha and there's two label alphas, right? Uh, yes. So is that uh, playing a role here? That's exactly yes, what I was course, in this course. statement. Yes, of course. So it's that's sort of putting role. it by hand in a way, right? Because uh, it's putting what what you're putting in by hand is that there is entanglement between B and R. 
Okay, so this product structure here is putting in by hand the fact that there is entanglement between B and R, but that's what you want because when you have a black hole which is evaporating, you yeah, know, the, yeah, of course. Yes, expect, expect that process to generate entanglement between the original system and the radiation system, right? Yeah, so, but, uh, but one of the interesting things that you would like to probably see, uh, I mean, what, what, I, what, what I want to say, what you miss the dynamical information is that uh, this island times R, right? That, uh, that uh, it becomes more or less a pure state, right? You, you, uh, uh, so in, in the sense that uh, uh, the entanglement, uh, now if you, if you look at the Hawking pairs, they are either in, in both of these, right? So together, so you cannot produce more entanglement anymore. Right, that is, uh, right. but this, this is not something that you can uh, see happening if you put it back, right? This is something that you just, uh, so, so this, this transition, but not this dynamical transition you're missing. So I'm just trying to ask the question is, what, what aspects of this, I mean, what aspect or dynamics is captured by the toy model and what's not? So that's, I'm just trying to get a sense of that. That's all, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's what, why I'm asking this question. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so, uh, so you're right that um, sort of the, the entanglement structure here is being put in by hand, but I, I should say that this entanglement structure has been put in by hand uh, for the UV systems. So, you know, it's, it's, we are putting in by hand the fact that the UV quantum system B is entangled with the, uh, the full bath system R. Uh, and then we are asking, well, what happens now to the encoding structure of the dual, the, the dual semi-classical space-time? Okay, uh, I think it's a fairly reasonable thing to assume that if you couple two quantum systems B and R, that they get more and more entangled. Okay, and that is all that is going into this calculation. So you're, all you're saying is that as you entangle B and R more and more, these UV quantum systems, as you entangle them more and more, you're asking what happens to the dual space-time picture, uh, and that is not being uh, put in by hand. The dual space-time picture can be completely just explicitly derived by doing these sort of Rennie entropy calculations. Okay, uh, okay so okay. What, is, what is being put in by hand is the fact that in the dual quantum systems or in the CFD, if you like, there is entanglement being generated uh, with, with, with time as, as you couple these two systems. Mm. Is that clear? Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, okay, great, wonderful. Thank you for that question. Um, uh, uh, great, so let's let's proceed then. Um, so as I was saying, our goal here will be to study uh, quantum error correction in this uh, in this language. Um, and uh, just to uh, so so the the main thing that I have to tell you is what is the uh, sort of encoding map uh, in in this setup, and the encoding map is relatively sort of easy to guess. Um, so suppose you have some state uh, i comma i prime in the code subspace. Remember that the first, so in my notation, the first label is uh, uh, the label for, uh, let's say the interior of the black hole. And the second label is the label for the exterior of the black hole. Okay. Um, so given some state i comma i prime of bulk quantum field, uh, uh, excitations, uh, then uh, the the encoding the encoded state in the full physical Hilbert space, the big Hilbert space, is is just is written is written here. So this this box equation, if you like, is the encoding map. So what you do is you just uh, sort of take the same take the the state to have the same structure as this that I described before, uh, except now um, you put these labels i and i prime on psi alpha, which is to say that you should think of the psi alpha uh, state on B uh, as having uh, uh, as as being as being some state in B which is dual uh, to a black hole uh, with uh, quantum fields in the state i on the interior and i prime on the exterior. Okay. So what the way the way you would prepare such a state uh, in B is again you would go back to your uh, Euclidean path integral that uh, that we were uh, talking about here, and in principle you would sort of turn on some sources perhaps uh, on this Euclidean path integral, uh, and that would have the effect 
of uh, turning on some excitation I uh, in the interior of the black hole and I prime on the exterior of the black hole. Okay, so that's how you would prepare uh, these states, uh, these states psi uh, alpha uh, with the uh, subscript I comma I prime. Um, and then the, uh, so, so then what I'm writing here is the encoding map. Uh, so given the state I comma I prime in the code subspace, this, this boxed equation tells you what is its image uh, in the full physical Hilbert space uh, of D and R. Okay. Very good. So now uh, the main question we can we can finally yeah, again ask. some some yeah, really stupid question again no, maybe no, this is <laughs> why these I I prime labels are not there in in the alpha R. Yeah. So um, the I I prime are uh, you know they are states. Uh, in the code subspace, right? So they label the state of sort of the bulk effective field theory degrees of freedom or the bulk quantum field theory degrees of freedom on the black hole side. Um, yes, but uh, I thought that uh, you would expect uh, that because the whole system is evolving together, right? They cannot evolve separately, right? The bulk cannot simply evolve because the degrees of freedom are leaking into the, into the radiation system, right? That's correct. So you can think of um, you can think of this i and i prime as being so sort of at a given time t, you look at uh, this coupled system of the black hole and the yeah. And the so it's like an instantaneous slice of your arm. yeah yeah yeah. So at that time t, i and i prime are like the interior and exterior degrees of. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Uh, so there was i. Okay, there we go. So now what we are going to do is following the subsystem quantum error correction framework that I explained to you before, um, we are going to ask uh, whether some error channel or some quantum error acting on the environment, um, uh, sorry, acting on this, uh, this bath R uh, can be corrected or not. And the way we are going to model this error is just as before, we are going to introduce this ancillary environment degrees of freedom, which recall were, which we bring in in some, um, some, some fiducial state uh, E naught. Um, and then we couple that to our uh, radiation system R, or the black hole, or the bath R, uh, by acting uh, on the two, on these two together with this joint unitary U. That has the effect of acting on R with uh, this error channel uh, E. Uh, and then uh, we ask whether this error E can be corrected or not. And you'll remember that the way we, we formulated this in terms of mutual informations uh, was that we introduced these reference systems. Uh, so in the present context, we, uh, these correspond to a, refer a reference system for the interior of the black hole and a reference system for the exterior of the black hole. And just as we did before, we build this, uh, this sort of maximally entangled state between the reference uh, and the physical system. Uh, and then we act on the physical system and the environment uh, with this, this joint unitary U. Okay, so the full picture is like this. Uh, you have these two reference systems, which you introduce uh, for notation. Uh, which are entangled with your interior degrees of freedom and the exterior degrees of freedom respectively. Um, and uh, the, the, there is this bath which the black hole is evaporating into. Uh, you consider this error channel, uh, which corresponds to bringing in this ancillary environment and coupling it with this joint unitary U. Uh, and in this total state, you ask, what is the mutual information between the reference system corresponding to the interior modes um, with the reference system corresponding to the exterior modes and the environment, okay? And if this mutual information is zero or small, uh, then the error can be corrected. Uh, if this mutual information is not zero or is large, uh, then this error is not is highly non-correctable, okay? So, so now everything boils down basically to computing uh, this particular mutual information. 
And uh, because we are using, uh, we are doing a gravity calculation, uh, it's more convenient to use sort of Rennie entropies instead of computing entanglement entropies directly. Um, it's more convenient to use Rennie entropies. So that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll go ahead now and compute uh, the Rennie mutual information uh, and then take the n going to one limit. Uh, but before that, are there, are there any questions? Okay, if not, I'll proceed. By the way, I note that it's almost six, is, it's almost an hour. Um, so is it okay if I take five or 10 more minutes? Well, it's still five, six minutes to, because we started like four minutes later. Okay, great, okay, great. So great. we still have six minutes and you can also take more time, yeah. Okay, wonderful. So I, I think I should be done in 10 minutes or so. Great. Uh, fine, so now the, now the point is to compute this, uh, this mutual information. And um, so I'm going to spare you a lot of the details of this calculation, but I'll give you a flavor of how these calculations proceed. So let's say, for example, that we want to compute one of the terms uh, in this mutual information. Let's say, let's say we want to compute this term here. So what one does is one instead computes the Rennie entropy correspond, corresponding to that density matrix. Now, in order to compute the Rennie entropy, uh, what you have to do is you have to take the nth power of that density matrix. So, uh, you know, starting from the state, the state here, you can pretty easily compute uh, the density matrix uh, for uh, the two reference systems and the environment, uh, and then take its nth power. Uh, and you find an expression like this. Uh, don't worry if you don't follow all of the notation because it's complicated. Um, but just the, the one thing that I want to have to highlight is that um, there are a bunch of terms in, in black which correspond to uh, sort of um, overlaps of black hole states, okay? They're, they're uh, in this quantum system B dual to the black hole. Uh, and then there are a whole bunch of overlaps uh, which correspond to the, uh, which correspond to overlaps in the state R and all of the information about the quantum channel is contained inside these blue terms, okay? These, cap these E's here um, are like the, are the Krauss operators uh, for, the, uh, for the quantum error, for the error. Um, and so all of the information about the error is contained inside these blue terms. The black terms know nothing about the error. They are just some overlaps uh, in the gravity system or in the, in the quantum system B dual to the gravity system. Now these blue terms, uh, which correspond, which which have which uh, which know about the error, you can sort of visualize them in terms of a of a tensor network, uh, which I've drawn on the left here. Here, um, and um, what what is going on? I, I'm not going to try and explain the details of this uh, calculation, but what's going on is that these blue terms uh, sort of uh, form a tensor network, which is then glommed on to uh, sort of these black hole uh, state overlaps, uh, which you can think of in terms of the sort of, uh, you know, these, these black lines. So these black lines that I'm highlighting um, are, the, are these, um, these sort of overlaps in the, the, in the, in the black hole, uh, in the, the quantum system B dual to the black hole. Uh, they are being represented as black lines here because they, you can think of them in terms of Euclidean path integrals, um, uh, which is what the spectra is supposed to show. Um, and then, um, then you have, uh, in addition, these blue terms corresponding to the quantum error, uh, which, uh, which gets sort of attached uh, to, 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 the, to the Euclidean path integral in, in this particular way, okay? So this is roughly speaking the diagram that you want to evaluate. Um, and what one does is one now evaluates the, the sort of black hole microstate overlaps by using JT gravity. Um, of course, JT gravity computes uh, expect, like ensemble averages for you, but in, in this context, it's possible to show that the variance is small. Um, so one can basically evaluate this, uh, uh, this particular uh, diagram by um, using JT gravity. 
Now, in doing that, we are assuming um, we are assuming that this channel, the error channel E, does not contain any additional sort of microstate information uh, inside it, which is to say that it is not some something that is fine tuned with prior access to black, black hole microstate data, uh, because if it did, then it, in, it could potentially sort of modify the asymptotic boundary conditions that one is using um, to evaluate this diagram in JT gravity. Um, but an a counter example for, of, that, of that would be if this channel involves uh, something like the, something called the PETS operator, um, where, where this sort of a thing does happen. Uh, but uh, essentially what we're assuming is that this channel E, the error channel E is not fine tuned uh, with prior access to black hole microstate uh, overlaps. Um, and as long as that is the case, then the calculation that we are going to do uh, will be valid. Okay. So you mean it's Done. like a typical, what do you mean it's not fine tuned? It means something, it's a typical error channel, not a very specific one. Or... Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's not a very highly fine tuned channel. Uh, and in particular, it's not a fine, it's not fine tuned with prior access to black hole microstate data. Okay. Because if you did have access to black hole microstate data, then you can construct a very fine tuned channel, uh, which will interfere with the, with the encoding. Uh, of the black hole interior. Um, so it, it, it is not a, a one example of a fine tuned channel would be something like the recovery channel itself or something like that. Uh, exactly, or, or exactly, like that. Okay. exactly. So one, one example of a, of a fine tuned channel would be the SPETS operator reconstruction, which, which as you said, recovers black hole, which, which sort of reconstructs operators on the black hole interior. So if you, if you, that's a very highly fine tuned channel. And in addition, it also requires um, sort of access to like black hole microstate overlaps. Um, but I'm assuming that this error channel E that, that we have, it does not have access to all of this data and is not so highly fine tuned. Okay, so maybe I, I, can, I can maybe ask another question. Maybe you can answer it after your talk also. So in this kind of, uh, because you are, very, you are very crisp with this uh, diagram that you, that you drew, I thought uh, one of the typical things uh, this uh, this kind of this toy model assumes is that uh, you are basically uh, the the R itself is an ensemble, right? Your your it's not a specific kind of a uh, theory, but it's an ensemble of right theories. Yeah. And uh, in that case, yeah. all of these. Uh, so, what are we exactly talking about? Here? Are we talking of an ensemble of uh, such? Yeah. Tensor networks or so R is not a R is not an ensemble. R can be a specific quantum system. Um, in, in fact, B is also a specific quantum system. So what one does is what is that one computes this thing, this Remy entropy, in some specific quantum system B and R, oh. and then oh. this. So at the end of the day, this is a number, which I can mm. then average. Uh, over the over the system B for some ensemble of Hamiltonians, okay. And in using JT gravity, that is what is going on. We are basically averaging uh, over the Hamiltonian of B, which is uh, which is um, uh, which is the one which gives rise to JT gravity in the bubble. Yeah, but so, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So here, the, the the assumption is that the Euclidean path integral is what is responsible for the averaging that we are doing over right. kind of. Well, what's what's going to, I mean, where the averaging is going to be crucial is the fact that now we sort of we are going to take this this boundary diagram and fill it in with but with bulk geometries like this, like this picture. Yes, but, but but then all these theorems that you were using before. That was only in the context of this unitary operator acting uh, on this uh, uh, on the full uh, on the on the on the environment across the system, and not on the reference, of course, but on this thing. And then, uh, but this unitary operation. But how, I mean, I don't. Uh, so, 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 what, what do you because if the unitary operator itself is an ensemble, right, uh, rather well, than an ensemble of Hamiltonians. It's an no, ensemble no, no. of unitaries, right? That's what you no, 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 no. So that's not right. Um, so the unitary 
are not an ensemble, okay? So th this, this unitary U is just some specific unitary that corresponds to the error channel that you pick. Okay, what is an ensemble, at, not at this stage, but you know, what you can do is you can pick this, this state here, the physical, um, the physical state uh, um, to be, to be uh, one of the states of this uh, JT gravity ensemble. Or in other words, oh, I see. You, I, 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 I'm, I'm confusing two different things. This unitary, this error channel is not a real time evolution operator. Exactly. This is, exactly. This is that's something right. that uh, that's simply an okay. That's okay, right. That's right. Okay. But yeah. well, what is this unitary doing? Usually, when you talk of a unitary in this language, you mean it's a time evolution, right? But here you're you not of, talking. It's basically just what this unitary U is doing is that it's you know it, for the error channel there is some environment. Right, uh, it's some. There are some ancillary degrees of freedom that you bring in, and this unitary basically basically couples together uh, your bath with this ancillary degrees of freedom, uh, and you know that's that's its role basically. You know, you can think of it as time evolution if you want, um, but it that's not necessary. It, it's it's only game. Its only role in the game is to just sort of couple these ancillary degrees of freedom uh, with the environment. And that has the effect uh, of acting on on the on the path with this error channel. Okay, I see. I see. okay, so, but, okay this part. mixture of Lorenzian and Euclidean pictures make me very confused. Okay, but but now I get okay. it. Okay, thanks. Okay, yeah. great, great, wonderful. Thank you for the clarification. Um, now, so so the so the, so um, so the the last part here is that we 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 set up this calculation. Uh, for the mutual information. And now what we are going to do is we are going to, uh, with the assumption that I, I, I highlighted over here, we are going to compute uh, this particular diagram by filling in um, these Euclidean path integrals with uh, various bulk geometries. Um, so for example, the, the simplest bulk geometry that you can, uh, you can use is the fully disconnected geometry where each of these, um, each of these red lines that are uh, drawn here are end of the world brains in JT gravity, and the shaded portions are like uh, bulk JT gravity space times. Um, so using this fully disconnected geometry, you you get some you can compute um, you can compute very explicitly uh, this particular uh, Rennie entropy, uh, and you find an answer like this. Uh, where di is the dimension of the interior code subspace, de is the dimension of the exterior code subspace. And um, this sigma environment is essentially just some density matrix which depends only on the quantum channel. So all of the information about the quantum channel now will get packaged inside this, uh, this piece here, the sigma environment. And it's defined uh, as follows. Uh, you take the maximally entangled state uh, on the bath. Uh, you couple it to the same fiducial state on the environment. You do this joint unitary, and then you trace out the bath. Okay. So in other words, the sigma environment, uh, the sigma environment is basically uh, uh, the is basically the density matrix. Uh, on the ancillary environment degrees of freedom corresponding to the error uh, after it, you act uh, with this error uh, on the maximally entangled state. Okay. Um, and similarly, you can also compute all of the other Rennie entropies. I'm not going to go through these calculations in detail, uh, but what you find at the end of the day is that once you put everything together and you compute uh, the Rennie mutual information, um, you find that uh, the disconnected geometry in the bulk uh, gives you a, a trivial mutual information. So the mutual inf any mutual information vanishes. Uh, and you'll remember that this, the vanishing of the Rennie mutual information uh, implies uh, that the, the quantum error, the error, uh, the error channel E uh, can be corrected. Okay. So what we learn is that when the disconnected geometry dominates in the bulk, then uh, the error uh, e can be corrected. On the other hand, you could also use other geometries uh, to fill in uh, these Euclidean path integral boundary conditions. 
In particular, one of the most, one of the other important geometries is this rep, so-called replica wormhole, which is a fully connected geometry. And again, uh, just like before, you can calculate the contribution uh, to all of the Rennie entropies coming from here. Let me just uh, tell you what the answer is. Uh, the answer is that in this case, uh, in the case of the replica wormhole, um, you find that the, the, the mutual information is non-zero. In fact, you find that it is two times uh, log of the interior, the dimension of the interior Hilbert Okay. So, so in other words, when the fully connected replica wormhole dominates, you find some mutual information and the error is not correctable. But when the, dis the fully disconnected geometry dominates, then uh, the mutual information vanishes and the error is correctable. Uh, and so one last question that is important is to understand uh, when uh, the disconnected geometry dominates over the connected one, okay? Uh, and this you can pretty easily figure out by just looking at these various expressions uh, for the Rennie, uh, for, the, for these Rennie entropies. And it turns out uh, that uh, the criterion is, is this condition given in this box equation, um, where um, you, you remember that the sigma environment is the, is the, is the density matrix on the environment factor when the quantum channel acts on a maximally mixed state. And similarly, sigma r is the density matrix on the bath factor when the quantum channel acts on, a, again, acts on a maximally mixed state, okay? So in particular, this entire left-hand side is just some function of the quantum channel, okay? Uh, uh, in this boxed equation here, I've reformulated this entirely in terms of entropies as opposed to any entropies. Um, the important thing is that this left-hand side is entirely a property of property of the quantum channel uh, and has nothing to do with uh, the black hole. Uh, but on the right-hand side, we have the uh, entropy of the black hole. And so what this is saying is that as long as this left-hand side is much greater than minus the black hole entropy, uh, then the, the error will be correctable, okay? So this gives us an explicit criterion uh, for when quantum error correction uh, for such, uh, for such uh, error uh, operations uh, works in this case. Uh, and in fact, this left-hand side here uh, in quantum information theory, this is called the coherent information uh, of a channel. Um, so what we learn is that, uh, uh, in fact, if, if the coherent, it's, it, the coherent information is some sort of a measure of how noisy a channel is. Um, if it's a very negative number, then it means the channel is very noisy. Um, and so this this uh, this criterion basically says that um, you know if as long as the channel is not very noisy, then it's going to be correctable. Okay. Um, uh, can I ask something? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I understand you're looking at the dominant contribution should be disconnected, but it can be that it is sum over all disconnected that yeah. also could be. Uh, could yeah, yeah, that's a, by some word by some word disconnected, you mean you're referring to the other satellites, right? The yeah, all the other satellites. It was sum over yeah, all the yeah. other channels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was going to say that I was going to say that uh, next, which is that uh, you can, uh, in fact, also include other satellites. Um, so in this talk, of course, I did not, but you can compute at least the co contribution from other uh, potentially dominant saddles, which can be become important at some point in the parameter space uh, by using the Schringer Dyson approach. And what you find is a, is a more smooth uh, curve, a more smooth transition between uh, the, so here, this is the fully disconnected answer. Uh, and here, this is the fully connected answer. Uh, and the, the full curve that you get from the Schwinger Dyson approach sort of interpolates between them. Um, but the discrepancy between the two answers is, is important only over a very small, small band near the transition. Uh, away from that point, uh, the, the fully disconnected or the fully connected geometries captured the mutual information quite accurately. It, was that your question, Ayan? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, that was the question. Yeah, so okay. uh, the role of, if you to find what happens when take, take into account all saddles, but yeah. this yeah. IN is uh, only still a specific saddle, right? It's not a sum over all saddles. No, no, IN is the mutual, the nth mutual information. So ah, N the nth mutual, sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. this, oh, sorry, okay. Yeah, so th this indeed includes a sum over saddles. Yeah. 
okay. Um, so, so I wanted to end with some remarks, um, but, uh, oh, sorry. So to summarize, I, I'm almost done, by the way, I'll need just two more minutes. Uh, to summarize, uh, we've shown that the black hole interior is uh, protected from generic errors on the path, uh, which uh, do not have access, well, which first of all, they shouldn't be very fine tuned and uh, they shouldn't have prior access to black hole microstate overlaps. But also secondly, uh, they shouldn't be very noisy. Um, and uh, so more precisely, they should have, they shouldn't have a very large and negative coherent information where the lower bound for this, uh, for this coherent information is given by minus the black hole entity. Okay, and uh, let me just end with remarks. Uh, I already explained this, but you can also include additional saddles uh, sort of partially connected saddles uh, in, this, in this calculation by using the Schwinger-Dyson approach. Um, and that sort of smoothens out this transition between the disconnected and the connected answer. Um, and also it, 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 is in, it would be interesting, uh, and in fact is work in progress, to ask how these quantum error correction properties generalize to more uh, general entanglement wedges going beyond just the interior of a black hole. Um, in particular, we expect much of what uh, much of this uh, analysis to to also apply to what are called Python's lunch lunches um, in more general entanglement wedges. Uh, but this this is still work in progress. Um, so um, we hope to report on that at some some other point. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot for this great talk. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, there are a lot of questions, and really I am. So maybe there should others should also ask questions now. Uh, hi, I am. I just uh, had a question. Prabha here. Ah, uh, hi, Prabha. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Sorry, I joined a bit late. Uh, so, Onkar, I uh, had a question from the error correction perspective. Uh -huh. Your definition of something being correctable uh, is when this mutual uh, information vanishes completely, right? Which is, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you don't allow for really approximate sort of correction. In this. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, so uh, in principle, what we do is we compute this mutual information, right? And if this mutual information is zero, then mm -hmm. uh, the error is exactly correctable. But right. you're quite right. If, if in, in principle, you know, even like in, in this figure, uh, for, a, for a large range of parameter, uh, parameters, parameters uh, the error is actually not strictly zero. It's like exponentially small in the black hole entity. Um, and so in that case, you can sort of, uh, um, you can sort of, uh, you can say that the error, the error is approximately correctable in, in some sense, which where, you know, the, the, I think the square root or the fourth root of this mutual information bounds the one norm distance between the recovered density matrix and the original density matrix. So in that, in that, in that sense, um, when the mutual information is small, you know that the error is going to be at least approximately correctable. So, so, so in that sense, this mutual information is sort of a, a, a nice thing, which generalizes uh, to approximate error correction as well. Was that your question? Yeah, indeed, indeed. I was, I was just okay. going to ask whether this smoothly generalizes to that as well, yes. or whether it was a kind of strict uh, uh, cutoff that you had. Uh, sort of follow-up question was this comment you made about the PETS map and requiring uh -huh. knowledge of the microstate overlaps. Uh -huh. So, uh, I, I mean, even in this, uh, once you uh, deviate from the exact zero value for the perfect correction, typically uh -huh. approximate recoveries will make use of some information of the uh, noise channel uh, in some uh -huh. sense, right? So then does that throw a dampener in the works or is that still okay? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Um, I think that the PETS map should um, should basically, in the, even in that situation, the PETS map should um, um, at least work approximately. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I think that I think it should it should give you approximate recovery. But um, okay. Um, okay. I'm I'm not 100% sure. So let me not commit to answering that. Okay. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Any further question? 
Okay, then I have a question here. So uh -huh. uh, how do you see something like quantum information mirroring in this context? Uh, could you could you elaborate? Like what what exactly do you what what phenomenon did you have in mind? Yeah, I mean, suppose if you put in some, if you if you now throw something in, in the black hole, oh, the information yeah, so should come out in page time. And uh, is mm -hmm. there a way to see this in this just in this sort of Euclidean language alone, in this through this toy model? In this toy model, um, uh, I believe there should be. Uh, this, in, unfortunately, this toy model is sort of too simple, simple minded to uh, incorporate uh, time dynamics like that. You can see the Hayden Preskill effect in more dynamical settings, you know, where, um, uh, for example, in yeah, the original the papers of, yeah, right. the original paper of Pennington or uh, Almeri uh, and collaborators, you could, you can, you can see Hayden Preskill working out in their dynamical context. Uh, this particular time model is a little yeah, bit- but it's not quantum mission, mirror, mirror. Yeah, it's not a quantum information mirroring itself is working out. It's simply that the, the motion of the QS captures the Hayden Preskill time. That's right? correct. That's, what, that's, that, uh, that's uh, correct. That's correct. So Hayden Preskill works out because uh, precisely after the scrambling time, the, the, the thing that you, you threw in enters the entanglement wedge of the bath. And so it's encoded in the bath after that point. Um, but uh, in this particular toy model, I'm not sure whether one can try and set that up. But I'm sure that there, there should be a way to do it. I mean, in principle, what one would do is one would um, bring in some uh, additional degree of freedom uh, and couple it with the B quantum system with some unitary operator uh, and mm. then uh, compute um, something like this mutual information that I described uh, uh, between, uh, between, I believe, the radiation or the bath uh, and this 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 extra quantum bit that you threw in, um, and presumably, if the the unitary uh, time evolution that you did was scrambling, uh, was sufficiently scrambling, then you would be able to uh, decode it from the bath by seeing that this mutual information becomes locked. Uh, so, so I believe uh, unless your quantum external surface moves, because here it is either there or it's a bifurcate horizon, either not there or at the perfect so that's like two different things, right? If I understood mm -hmm. correctly, yes. So, yeah. so if you if you could make the quantum extremal surface somehow move, uh, then of course, as you said before, you should be able to see that happening. Yes. Uh, but then you have to somehow in, in, impute time dynamics. Without that, I can't understand. Yeah, how. exactly. So it's a little bit. Yeah, exactly. This model is a little bit too simple, perhaps for that. But maybe you can also incorporate time dynamics by you know acting with some fiducial unitary operator. Um, on this, uh, you know, this extra bit that you're introducing, you couple it to the black hole with some extra, with some unit, with some scrambling unitary operator, and uh, hmm. assuming that it's sufficiently scrambling, uh, it should presumably like push this bit far enough into the interior of the black hole. Um, yeah, so but then I, I have a yeah. sort of another question: is that uh, so? Essentially, uh, what I don't understand is that. Uh, what typically what we expect is that you should be able to decode the last bit that went in very fast. So that should be like a simple encoding, whereas mm -hmm. whatever all the other stuff that that is supposed to should be exponentially complex right, to decode. So, mm -hmm. so how do you see that? Uh, so I, I, maybe the answer could be that this toy model is a bit too simple yeah, to see. That's all a this. good point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe this toy model is too simple to see this effect. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm so one needs sort of a like a real sort of toy dynamical model that one can capture yeah, more. That 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 sounds like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah that's, a, so, that's a good question. I'm I'm not sure of the top. Yeah. Okay, so I think we had a many questions today. Uh, let's see if there are more. A few, a few more, maybe a few short ones. Okay, so if not, let us officially end. Maybe unofficially, we can continue for two, three minutes after the recording ends and uh, can introduce you to some other people. Okay, okay, so thanks for coming and uh, let me stop recording. Thank you again for this talk. Thank you so much.